our satellites will scale the eighth satellite constellation already in operation at medium Earth orbit 8,000 kilometers from the Earth's surface, unlocking increased capacity and bringing enhanced network efficiency to the system. As the market demand for MEO services continues to soar, our bolstered fleet empowers even more governments, enterprises, and communities across Asia Pacific, Africa, the Middle East, and the Americas, solving connectivity challenges, driving digital inclusion, and enabling next generation AI applications. With the addition of these two powerful satellites, our O3B Empower constellation continues to set standard for global connectivity. O3B Empower satellites are the most powerful, technically advanced, flexible constellation in space. Our O3B Empower services are in high demand and we're eagerly waiting for this new two pair of satellites to strengthen our MEO network. These two new satellites bring incremental capacity to scale up services provided by our second generation MEO system, enabling us to meet the evolving needs of our customers around the world. Since becoming operational in 2024, our O3B Empower system has been successfully serving our mobility, government, enterprise, and cloud customers around the world, bringing critical connectivity where it matters the most. Our key customers include many cruise lines, fast-growing airline customers, NATO, government of Luxembourg, government of United States, and many other allied governments. I'm very proud of our SES team and partner teams that continue pushing boundaries of what's possible in space. Thank you to Boeing for building these powerful satellites, and thank you to SpaceX for our continued partnership. Let's watch the launch. That's Falcon 9 on your screen, a two-stage rocket that is 229 feet tall and getting ready to lift off in just about 8 minutes and 30 seconds. At launch, it produces more than 1.7 million pounds of thrust. At the bottom section of the, is the first stage, or booster, powered by net nine Merlin engines. They'll burn for the first couple of minutes, carrying Falcon 9 through the thickest layers of the Earth's atmosphere. If you've ever watched a launch in person, you'll know that the vehicle doesn't go straight up. Early in flight, Falcon 9 performs a gravity turn, a smooth pitch maneuver that tilts the rocket sideways to build up horizontal velocity. You may hear this in about 10 seconds after launch, called out as vehicle pitching downrange. Once the first stage completes its portion of the mission, it shuts down and separates. A stage rocket like Falcon 9 sheds the booster to eliminate the weight and uncover the Merlin vacuum engine on stage two. To reach Earth, to reach orbit, the vehicle needs to go fast, hitting an orbital velocity at, a, at about 28,000 kilometers per hour, just to keep from falling back to Earth. That's fast enough to lap the Earth in about 90 minutes or fly from New York to here in Los Angeles in just under 10 minutes which is about seven times faster than the fastest airplane. After stage separation, today's booster will land on our drone ship Just Read the Instructions, which is currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. This particular booster will be returning to Earth for its sixth time. The second stage takes over from there, powered the Merlin vacuum engine, also known as engine the- Engine chill has started. Also known as the MVAC, which is extended with its extended nozzle and optimized design, the MVAC drives maximum performance in the vacuum of space. Tonight, we'll ignite the engine three times before deploying the payload into orbit. And topping it all off is the payload fairing, a 17-foot wide carbon composite shell that protects the payload during the uphill trip through the atmosphere. For today's mission, we have two spacecrafts on the second stage and inside the fairing. Each payload will deploy at separate times, about stage seven Stage one, RP-1 load is complete. Good call out there. Um, the, each payload will deploy at separate times, about seven minutes apart from each other. Because of the launch adapter used for today's mission, we will not have a good view of the payloads and we will be ending today's broadcast on stage one landing. We'll confirm a sec successful deployment later on X. 
About three minutes into flight, both halves of the fairing will separate and parachute back to Earth. If recovery goes to plan, the fairings will be pulled from the ocean and prepped to fly again. One fairing half is flying for its 21st time today, and the other fairing half is flying for its ninth time. Some of our long-term viewers might know that SES was one of SpaceX's earliest launch customers and has been a key partner in a number of firsts for us, including being the first commission commercial satellite operator to launch on Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral with SES-8 on December 2013, and the first reflight of Falcon 9 with SES-10 in March of 2017. Today's mission marks our 15th launch with SES following our fourth O3B and Power mission last year. We greatly appreciate Thanks, pressing for a back retract. We greatly appreciate SES's support over the years and look forward to what the future holds. Next up in the countdown, the transporter erector or TE will begin to retract from Falcon 9. That is the large truss structure you see standing next to the rocket. It's hinged at the base and connected to the launch mount beneath the first stage. First, the, clamp, the clamps around the stage will open, then the TE will begin to pivot back. Strong back retract has started. Good call out there. And now you can see the clamps beginning to open. You may also hear the transporter erector, or TE, called the strong back. Same structure, different names. The TE does a lot more than lean. It rolls Falcon 9 out to the pad, raises it vertically, and stays connected through the final seconds. It provides fuel, power, telemetry, and command connections between ground systems and the rocket. Those clamps you saw at the top help stabilize the second stage during fueling. They also prevent movement in high winds. Once they open, the rocket is fully free at the top. Right now, both stages are nearly fully loaded with about a million pounds of propellant. This includes RP-1, a highly refined kerosene, and liquid oxygen chilled to over 300 degrees over below zero. Propellant is loaded late into the countdown, and that's intentional. Stage one, box load is complete. And there you heard that lock load is complete. Colder propellants are denser, and denser propellants mean more performance out of the same tanks. The colder it is, the more mass you can move. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will enter startup. At that point, the rocket's onbound flight computers take over. From here on, the countdown is fully autonomous. And now just inside of T minus two, two, and then just inside of T minus two seconds, the nine Merlin 1D engines ignite. Once they're at full power, Falcon 9 will lift off of the Stage pad. Stage two, lock load is complete. And it began its climb to orbit. As of now, the satellites remain healthy. The rocket is tracking no issues. Weather is green and the range is clear to support our scheduled liftoff at 5.27 p.m. Eastern Time. And we heard the call out that stage two locks load is complete. And with that, Falcon 9 is fully fueled in startup and heading into its final seconds before launch. Ground gas closeouts has started. Falcon 9 is in startup. T 
minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. Hold, hold, hold. Launch has been aborted. All right, team, let's move into the offload procedure in 1.160. We just heard an abort call out for over the nets. Let's listen in for any additional information about the abort from the launch director. Now, if you're just joining us, we just heard an abort called out over the nets, and we're standing by for more information.